Ever wondered what battery chemistries are being used globally in different markets worldwide? Well, here they are. Some of this information is brought to you by Mark Kane from Inside EVs. However, there are some incorrect details in their report, which I will clear up by sharing with you some up-to-date data from Moneyball. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Welcome to the channel. New subscribers, great to have you. Welcome back, everyone else. Now, if you are new, make sure you check out some of the 1,000 plus videos we've created over the last, uh, what's it been? Eight months only. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. Really appreciate your support. Now, if you want to buy any electric vehicle stocks, easiest way that I've found to do it is by using the Stake app. You don't pay a fee when you make trades. So you do pay an initial fee to deposit money into your account, but you don't pay a fee for individual trades. And I make a lot of different trades, a lot of small ones. So that is really beneficial for me. I'll put a link in the description below to how you can use that app, a link to my promotion code, which gives you a free stock when you create an account. So in 2021, the total battery capacity deployed onto roads globally in all newly sold passenger XEVs, which means new energy vehicles, battery electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids and hybrids was estimated at around 290 gigawatt hours. That's an increase of 113% year over year from 134 gigawatt hours the previous year. If we see another doubling this year, which we're likely to, that means that batteries deployed on roads this year would then be about 535 gigawatt hours, which is massive. So maybe Toyota was wrong when they claim we don't have enough batteries to go electric. Yeah. I think we're going to figure that out just fine. Thanks, Toyota. Now, according to Adam's intelligence, over 98% of that total capacity was deployed in plug-in electric cars. That would mean that over 280 gigawatt hours for battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids, and just a few gigawatt hours for hybrids. Even more interesting is the market share of particular groups of lithium ion chemistries. The high nickel group represents the majority of the market. In other words, the majority of the global electric vehicle market right now has high nickel concentration batteries. Now there are problems with this high nickel concentration and I'm gonna talk about that in another video. I believe high nickel concentration batteries are not the future of the electric vehicle industry. Maybe some percentage, but it's gonna be a small percentage in a decade from now. And I'll talk about why that is in a separate video. So what exactly was the percentage? Well, globally, high nickel batteries represented 54% shares. That's NCM chemistry batteries, nickel, cobalt, manganese, and also NCA chemistry batteries can be either. But 54% of all batteries sold worldwide had a high nickel content in them. Low nickel content was 26%, and no nickel content, or LFP batteries, represented 20%. But the really, really interesting thing here is the breakdown per continent. Now, the three groups vary quite significantly depending on the market. For example, in Asia, primarily China, the share of all three is comparable. And while in North America, it's mostly high nickel. The cathodes with about 60% or more nickel content. The LFP in Europe and North America is pretty rare. So in the Asia Pacific, according to Adamus Intelligence, no nickel chemistry is represented 34% of the total battery deployment in passenger plug-ins. So in other words, Adamus Intelligence claims that LFP batteries represent around 34% of the market in Asia. Well, actually, that research has been, well, proven to be potentially incorrect by more recent research from Moneyball, which says that LFP batteries actually were around about 50% of the market in China last year, which is correct based on all the information that I've been looking at the per month data I've been seeing every single month, LFP batteries close to 50%, if not at 50% of the market in Asia. Now in North America, batteries are mostly high nickel content and the LFP in Europe and North America, like I said, is quite rare. Now, one interesting fact here is that despite the fact that no nickel chemistry batteries or LFP batteries are responsible for only 20% of the world's total, they are used in nearly one quarter of all EVs. Now this is because usually this type of battery has a slightly lower total capacity, lower energy density limits, the total capacity on one end, while the lower cost encourages use of LFP in smaller, 
Entry-level models, on the other hand. In the Asia Pacific, LFP batteries though have been the most popular type of battery used for six straight months in a row. And it appears as though that lead is actually growing. Now, Adamus Intelligence reports that 55% of all lithium carbonate equivalent, or in other words, lithium, units deployed onto roads in 2021 globally were in the form of lithium hydroxide, 86% in Americas, 51% in Europe, and 30% in the Asia Pacific, while the remaining 45% were in the form of lithium carbonate. So you can see that in Europe, just over half of all batteries deployed in vehicles were high nickel content. You can see that nearly 50% nearly were low nickel content and maybe around about 5% were LFP batteries. However, I think that will change very drastically over the next decade. I believe we're gonna see a pivot away from those battery types to LFP batteries. And this is gonna look very, very different in a decade's time. One of the key reasons for this pivot away from high nickel content batteries is the cost. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are cheaper to produce. The other thing is that the patent in China on LFP batteries has ended. So what that means is that now companies in South Korea, including LG Chem and SK Innovation have both started to work on LFP batteries. So it looks as though both of those companies will be manufacturing LFP batteries within the next 24 months. In addition to that, obviously CATL is the world's largest manufacturer of LFP batteries and they're building a factory right now that's gonna provide Tesla with 70 gigawatt hours of LFP batteries per year. I mean, they're the largest manufacturer of LFP and they're ramping up very, very quickly. So are BYD, obviously, and they're the third largest manufacturer of EVs right now. Now, these charts would suggest to you that North America doesn't have any LFP batteries. Well, actually, that's not true. The reality is the Tesla Model 3 standard range called the rear wheel drive model, that comes standard with LFP batteries. And there will be a Model Y that will come standard with LFP batteries soon in many different countries around the world. It's currently already available in China. Now, official data coming from the CPCA actually says that LFP batteries are close to 50% in China now. And as we've seen that pivot last year, the last six months, away from ternary batteries towards LFP batteries, that will increase in China. And remember, China is the world's largest electric vehicle market, and they're exporting a lot of cars out of China globally. So I do think the use of LFP will grow for that reason as well. Hope you've learned something from this today. Have a great day and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.